Before we even get started, let's talk about the differences between Office 365 on iPadOS and Office 365 on iOS. Although almost all the apps are available to download for free on both operating systems, but only on iPadOS, you need to have an Office 365 subscription to edit and save changes to a PowerPoint, Excel, and Word doc. So if you're looking for a free Office suite for your iPad, this isn't going to be that video. Now that we have that out of the way, let's talk about Office 365 apps that are available on iPad. Although Microsoft has a fairly large number of applications available on Windows and Mac OS, only a small subset of those applications is available for iPad as well. Having said that, the apps that matter to most people are still available, which I think should be Excel, Word, PowerPoint, Outlook, and OneNote. And they are available to download for free from the App Store. On iPad OS, Word and PowerPoint are very similar to their web and PC counterparts. With that I mean, when you start the application, you can notice the similarity right away. Starting from being able to choose from multiple templates for you to create a new document with, or you can just start a blank document. If you want to open an existing document, it allows you to choose from your iPad's local storage, or you can just pick one from your OneDrive account. When you have a document open and you get to the application, you have access to all the basic formatting and typing features that are available on full version of Word and PowerPoint. You can also format the text based on predefined categories such as headings, quotes, and intense references. Something that I wasn't expecting is that you can insert equations, but for some reason you cannot insert symbols. Instead, there's a feature to insert icons, which is way better than symbols in my opinion. It doesn't require you to look through 15,000 things that are placed in 100 different font families like you have to on the desktop version of these applications. You can also insert shapes, lines, and tables from the Insert tab. It allows you to format these objects to an extent, but it is a very limited feature as you cannot even change the thickness of the outline on a shape or a table. Speaking of the table functionality, you can easily create a fully functional table with Word on iPadOS. Although your table starts with only three rows and three columns, you can resize the to add more columns or rows, change the table style, select from one of the templates available through the drop-down menu. Almost everything's available for you to use here. On PowerPoint, along with the text formatting and shape features that are available on Word, you also get access to some PowerPoint specific features. For instance, you can insert videos in your slides. You have access to the new slide design idea feature. This feature allows you to format your slides based on the content of your slide. It is a pretty neat feature if you're running low on time and you want to format your slides automatically. Obviously, you have the ability to add transitions and animations to your slides and its contents. As far as I can tell, this is a complete port of all the available options from the PC version of PowerPoint. What is not available are some advanced features that most people probably don't even use. For instance, you don't have access to Slide Master. Your ability to export your slide in multiple formats is very limited. Other than being able to save your native PPTX PowerPoint file, you can only export the file as a PDF or an ODP document. I know most people won't care about that. The only reason I care about that is because I use PowerPoint to create animations for my YouTube videos. So at least on Word and PowerPoint, there's no way to create charts and graphs on the iPad. For that, you have to switch to Excel. Just like the other two apps, you get a bunch of templates to choose from when you want to create a new document. You can also navigate to the Open tab and select an existing document from your iPad storage or from your OneDrive. You get access to all the features that are available for text editing, shapes, and formatting as you would on Word and PowerPoint. But on Excel, you have access to some advanced formula and table features as well. Compared to PC version of Excel, this version offers a much more user-friendly approach to formulas in Excel, which are categorized for easy access under the Formula tab. You can tap on each category to pull up a list of all the formulas under that category. If you want more information about a certain item on a list, you can simply tap on the information icon and it will give you a brief description of that formula. Once you have a good set of data collected, you can select that data and insert a graph or a chart to represent that data. You have access to all the customization and formatting options for your chart as you would on the PC version of this application. If you want to, you can also copy a chart from Excel and paste it into PowerPoint presentation or a Word document. Although these three apps have almost all the features of their PC counterparts, but sometimes they feel like they still need some quality of life changes. It might be because these apps are still playing catch up with iPad OS and its mouse and keyboard support. For instance, you can hold shift and use arrow keys to select multiple cells in Excel but you cannot do the same by holding shift and clicking the range of cells you want to get selected. Similarly, when you write a formula in Excel, you cannot navigate to the cells you want to reference with the keyboard alone. 
you would need to either type the cell name or tap on the cell you want to reference. When you want to copy a certain formula on multiple cells, you have to first select the cell that contains the formula, select fill as an option from the menu that shows up, and then you can select the range you want to copy the formula to. In my opinion at least, Excel suffers most from these annoyances, but PowerPoint and Word are a lot more usable. OneNote and Outlook are also available for iPadOS. OneNote is definitely an integral part of Office 365 and might just be the best cross-platform note-taking application that supports handwriting input and is available on iPadOS, iOS, Windows, and even Android. Despite being completely free to use, you have a great set of features available to you. You can create multiple notebooks that are synced between devices using OneDrive. In those notebooks, you can create sections, and in those sections, you can create pages, and in those pages, you can create subpages to keep your work organized. This app allows you to create custom templates based on a specific section. So if you have a section for meeting notes, for instance, you can create a template with prompts for attendees, topics to be discussed, and action items. From then on, whenever you create a new page in the meeting notes section, your page will already have the prompts ready for you to fill in. Other than using templates for meeting notes, I use template for my daily journal for which I use a custom image as my background, which is also an amazing feature of OneNote. OneNote also offers support for Apple Pencil, which means you can take handwritten notes which are also indexed using handwriting recognition. That means you can search for your handwritten notes from the universal search options available on OneNote. If all that didn't impress you already, you can also insert data in various formats, including equations, images, PDF files, audio files, websites, and even calendar data. There is also a research tool, which allows you to search for topics and insert relevant information back to your notes inside the same application itself. To add to the wow factor, it can create a citation for the web page you are using with just one tab. To be honest, there are so many features in this application that I could create a video dedicated to describing OneNote for iOS itself. Let's talk about Outlook, another extremely important aspect of Office 365, but it is available for free on iPadOS. If you ask me, this is probably the best email client for iPadOS and iOS. Obviously, you can do majority of the things that an email client does, such as adding multiple accounts, manage your emails, separate out the spam emails from the important ones, and so on. Other than that, I would like to point out that there is no shortcut support for Outlook. You can't even schedule emails to be sent out at a later date. You cannot drag and drop to attach a file in your emails, but I still think this is the best email client. For starters, there's a calendar section in this application that syncs with the email accounts you have added. So you have one application with all your email accounts and all your calendar related information available in one place. Then there is the file section of this email client. Here you will notice if you have a Gmail account synced to Outlook, you also have access to your Google Drive from Outlook itself, which means you can attach those files as attachments and emails being sent out from Outlook. Since there is cross compatibility between accounts, you can also send your Google Drive files as attachments from your Outlook.com email ID. This is also true for any attachments you receive in your emails. All the files that you received as attachments will be available for you to attach when you're creating a new email irrespective of what email accounts you choose to send the email from. This cross compatibility has made my life so much easier when it comes to file sharing and file management that I think despite all its flaws, Outlook is the best email client on iPadOS. Well, that's all I have for you today. If this video helped you in any way possible, please hit the like button below. And if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. Thanks again for watching. This is Geek.